What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here, and boy, do I have a build for you guys today. This is the most fun that I have ever had in New World Eternum when it comes to PvP. Oh my god, the blunder bussy actually smacks. Let's get into it. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, uh, I do have a metric crap load of gameplay at the end of the video so I'm just going to quickly cover the build and again this is a template you can mix and match however you want. This is my first build video for New World Interim and I'm not going to post crap guys if it's not good I'm not going to post it I'm not going to be a meta slave I'm trying to mix it up try, try, try to put my own little personal spin on the blunderbussy okay so first thing i want to talk about is the essentials that you absolutely have to have in order to play this build in such a way so i am a fire staff enjoyer i'm i i, I pretty much run fire staff on every single build so inferno if you're going to run this type of play style like a run and gun like one tap assassin build you 100 definitely need inferno you don't have to have it if you want to run a different weapon archetype it's entirely up to you you can do blunderbuss hatchet you know uh, sword and board whatever you want to do i personally prefer the inferno and then on the inferno i'll just kind of show you guys here i do have a flame attunement and uh, of course the uh, ignited opportunist uh, for the gem uh, when it comes to the the creme de la creme you could potentially run you know whatever blunderbuss that you want you you could run pestilence you know which is your artifact weapon you could run whatever different secondary weapon you want but this build does primarily revolve around the blunderbuss kind of a little bit of hybrid but uh i still very much enjoy it nonetheless so i'm specking into pretty much all fire damage on this build you know to kind of coincide with the inferno so i do have a uh, augmented rune in here to convert half the damage over into fire to just kind of bolster a little bit and i also do have a an abyssal attunement on this and you can farm this in the uh the the, the siren area uh, i'm not exactly sure what it's called on the map but uh wherever the siren is there is an npc that spawns on top of a wall and uh he can drop this uh he, you might be there while farming this but it's pretty good it comes with enchanted uh, which is uh pretty much like all your damage all your light and heavy attacks it comes with keenly empowered and again i put abyssal attunement uh on this guy uh the rest of the gear i'm just gonna qu quickly go over i am in light armor just gotta get what you can get you know when it comes you know try to get a bunch of two perks i'm running featherweight and then of course the illegal perk combination of the the frigid dawn i'm trying to tank up as much as possible because you do have to be up close and personal so you're you are gonna have to take a few hits i mean that's it is what it is uh, you could possibly argue that it would be better to run the azoth conductors and spec out a medium armor build um me personally i tried them both out yes you are a little bit tankier but you are missing out on quite a bit of, well i won't say quite a bit of damage but it's very important for you to one tap people on this build all right you have to have a lot of damage if you're trying to do this hybrid with 200 con 420 strength or whatever you're just simply not going to have the burst damage to do what needs to be done the blunder bussy is there to one tap okay and that's why I love most about it because you get these bruisers up on you. You get everyone who wants to ego check you to your face. And before they know it, they're just yeeted and deleted. All right. So I'll just quickly go over the rest of the gear. I have Frigid Dawn. I have Fire Harnessing on everything just because, again, I'm a Fire Staff Enjoyer. Alter that to you. You might want a defensive perk or maybe, you know, perks that will go um with some of your abilities you know like an empowering fireball or meatball or whatever what, whatever you want to run just frigid dawn featherweight is very very good i do have all the ignited opal rune glass in these because um, i consider these bis until i get 725 gear so uh, i might as well kind of spec it out as much as i can um on the uh, on the pants you do want El elia version uh, empowering fireball you don't have to have that because you can have that on your boots if you want but you do need shirking energy i at the point of making this video i do not have shirking energy so um, if you are in a light build that's pretty much a necessity in my opinion and then when it comes to the boots uh try to have a mix and match a mix and match fuck english hard man mix and match of like slash conditioning thrust conditioning protections you know some some defensive perks because you are going to take a lot of hits trying to get in for your one shot combos okay um, i do have a lot of refreshing to kind of reduce cooldowns again fire harnessing slash conditioning uh, we'll go over to Heart Gym. Um, you're going to need this one, your stone form. You are squishy. I'm just going to tell you, you're going to be running 100 con. 
you have around 13.5 14k health depending on you know whether you get you know health on your gear or whatever um you gotta be able to take kits you gotta be able to get out because a lot of the time you're going to poke with your fire staff you're going to use your ass blaster to get in range and then you're just gonna one tap with your uh, your blunderbuss assuming you set the combo correctly it is easily kind of worked around you do have to kind of mind game your opponent a little bit but uh you catch them off guard they're, they're out of 5000 as you'll see in the clips later on in the video uh, when it comes to the amulets um i do have slash protection on uh usually i have thrust protection but uh muskets haven't been really giving me a problem because i just one tap the musket boys anyway and i haven't seen a lot of rapier builds that have given me any go it's mostly the bruisers that get up on you with the, the perma stun cc and it's it's just helpful to try to mitigate as much as possible now when it comes to this perk so you can uh, there, there's one perk excuse me you don't have to have the seven percent health you know if, if if you get an ambulance that has i forget what it is it's shirking something but essentially it gives you all like 50 of your stamina back you know or whatever when you get below a certain amount whatever don't matter don't care we get a lot of stamina regen on this build anyway the perk i want to focus on is shirking dot cleanse this is muy importante okay muy importante when you get those big girthy thick dick ticks on you that are hitting you for like four or five hundred every single tick this helps a lot to remove those since we don't innately have a purge on the build we don't really ha we're not running any shirking hills so we don't have any self sustain other than our potions so when we have the opportunity to cleanse any dots we definitely go into okay now uh, let's talk about ellie band for a second this is currently bugged um I'll go and read it. Elemental affinity when you hit a target with an elemental damage attack. Parentheses, okay. Does not trigger on damage over time or attunements. It 100% does at the point of making this video. It does trigger on damage over time effects and attunements. So naturally you'll want as many different damage types as possible to get the most, to get the maximum amount of empower as possible. Hardy as always can wear this. I did put invigorated punishment on this. Uh, you don't have to. That's just what I prefer. And last but not least, this is not BIS by any means, but I needed a strength earring because, you know, uh, we need strength on this, right? And I had a bunch of ink gear. Actually, in hindsight, it's not bad. Anyway, uh, so we do have refreshing, uh, refreshing toast as well as regeneration. Okay, uh, so you're not really having any mana problems on this. Normally, I would have the... Uh, the perk that gives you your health back when you pop a mana potion but i don't really pop them all that much usually just regen health potions is really all you're going to need so that covers the gear kind of show you uh, what i'm running I'm, I'm trying to make this quick as possible all right so uh, let's go over into the uh, stats allocation here let me go ahead and fully buff up just so you guys can get a uh a general idea of how we're rocking everything here so we're, we're just going to take a uh, good old fruit salad uh, it doesn't matter if you have strength food or int food or con food. Actually, it might matter if you have con food depending on your gear. Uh, you don't want to run more than 100. I, I, I know that's a, a lot to swallow, but the, the dividends of running an extra 50 intelligence is is incredible. So, yeah, you could run 150, um, but the problem is you're not going to be able to hit your uh, threshold of your 10% uh, damage increase to elemental damage. Okay, uh, your fire staff, um, half of your blunderbuss since you expect it to fire is doing elemental damage. Uh, this is a huge damage decrease if you do not hit this threshold. Okay, so the best way to run this stat wise is 100 con, 150 int, and then whatever you have left, toss into strength. This is what's best for me. You can see blunderbuss damage is actually through the roof. As long as you're hitting your, your three, 350 threshold, your 150 and your 100, you should be good to go. All right, so with the stats out of the way, let's take a look at some of the weapon masteries. Now for the fire staff, there, there, there's two different ways you can kind of run this. So. Uh, this is pretty much the, the cookie cutter way of doing it. Though. What I also like to do, just, just kind of screen cap this, okay? Just screenshot this. There's no point in me going through all the abilities. Uh, th this to me is like the best way to run this if you want to run the left tree. Now the right tree, the pyromancer, if you want to run backdraft, uh, that it's hit and miss, okay? If you want to run backdraft, it has a surprisingly amount of really good burst, what you'll have to do. I'll just go ahead and respect this just so you guys can you know, kind of see there's two different ways of doing it so you can either just get all of the passives that you don't necessarily want in addition to burnout to acquire backdraft and then on your abilities over here you just want the the base form 
this is what you want. So if you want to run backdraft uh, build number two, build number one you just saw, build number two is going to be this one. However, if you want to edge it up a little bit, you could potentially go and take all these out. Um, I do like using incinerate. Again, if you have like any perks that's going to bolster incinerate, it's actually pretty good because it purges you. It does weaken. It, it does a lot of stuff, man. Like, they, they, they buffed it good, all right? So you want to take all the incinerates. You want to take your burnouts. I like having heated up because you do get a lot of burst potential landing on people with this. Um, you're going to need the fortify. I'm just going to tell you that right now. And you're also going to need trial by fire, okay? Trial by fire is really good when you get up close and personal, which you're going to be anyway. If you want to use your ass blaster to get up in there, you know, get up, get up in there, you know, you know, arm deep, you know what I mean? um and then the other tree i just use meteor you definitely want empowering fireball for this otherwise you're missing out on a lot of damage and then this is to i uh, get your crit chance and yada yada and all that and then you have one point left over you can kind of put this wherever you want uh you can put this into meteor as well to kind of get the smolder um you don't have to run meteor um, you can run pillar of fire if you want the reason i don't want to run pillar of fire is because the whole purpose of backdraft is to consume your smolder stacks and then if you're consuming your smolder stacks, you don't want to run Pillar of Fire because it stacks off your smolder stacks. You know what I mean? So this helps you a lot because it gives you grit and it has a lot of really good passes. This is a very stat dense loaded skill on a very, very low cooldown. Um, it is quite nice, especially when you get those bruisers um, on top of you. So um, if I were you guys, I would probably put my last point. Um, I kind of stay away from combat speed because it, when you have people running a lack or punishment, they're going to be doing like 15% more damage to you at all times, which kind of sucks. Um, you could do watch it burn. This would probably be uh, the one where you crit to do smolder. Or if you want to, you can be up close and personal anyway. You can just run Kindle right and then when you're roll dodging you threw you know, excuse me not kindle uh heat it up when you're roll dodging through people you actually apply smolder stacks to them so uh that's entirely up to you where you want this last flex point but this will be the third way to run the uh the fire stab yeah so let's go over into the uh the the blunder bussy Hopefully you guys don't mind me calling it the, the blunder bussy but this is the skill build that I have you can tweak this as much as you want. I've done a lot of play testing with this. I, I don't really know 120% the best way to run every single thing, but um, I will say if you're going to use target lock, uh, you don't want to run blast shot because what will happen when you stun them, you may think it's a really good idea. Okay, I can stun them with blast shot. They're laying on the ground. Um, I can lay my splitting grenades on them and then I can, you know, shrapnel blast. And the thing is, if you use target lock at all, it's going to miss. It's going to aim center mass. They're laying on the ground. It's going to miss every single time. So if you're running blast shot you just have to not use target lock um that's 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 the only way around it okay target lock is i don't say broken it is hit and miss there, there's ways you can play around it um what i like to do right before i start taking like a lie attack shot i will toggle the the auto lock really quick and then untoggle it now i'll do that in between every single shot because the tracking on it like say if, say if you put target lock on someone and they're moving side to side it 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 out you can out race the the reticle you know what i mean whereas if you if you toggle on toggle toggle on toggle it snaps right to that person so get in the habit of in between your shots and in between your abilities toggle untoggle to make sure it kind of snaps to them like a, a really snappy aim assist you know like, like in call of duty uh just, just a tidbit there um a lot of people's gonna talk crap about using target lock i mean it is what it is they nerfed the blunderbuss because target lock is in the game so it's it's quote unquote balanced okay you're gonna have a lot of people calling you out blunder you know blunderbuss crutch your aim lock crutch blah 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 they're just jealous okay they're just jealous because they can't one tap <laughs> uh, anyway but yeah uh we, we got azos shrapnel blast i do i do like deep load uh <laughs> <laughs> let me take that back i don't like deep loads the passive deep load is, is quite nice um future endeavors of course you get your stamina back i definitely run the uh the uh, the, the unload passive here uh, for your your ultimate and of course splitting grenade uh future planning uh, you need a lot of fortify uh if anything you need last chance it's 50 percent fortify when you get really low uh you're definitely gonna need this okay here's 110 percent gonna need it and uh yeah that does it for the blunderbussy loadout all right, guys, hopefully that was nice, short, and sweet. Uh, this has been Horcrux. Don't forget to like and sub. I do stream pretty much every day on Twitch. Go follow me at twitch.tv slash horcruxyt. If you're watching here on YouTube, I would really appreciate 
a like and sub okay we do have youtube memberships enabled so if you want a metric crap ton of perks and help support the channel i would really appreciate you guys and as always a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons as well as my community members you guys are absolutely amazing i appreciate each and every single one of you this has been Horcrux, and I really hope you guys enjoy watching the clips nearly as much as I enjoy making them. So you guys have a great rest of your day. Have a good turkey holiday gobble gobble, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.